Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. everybody. Uh, I had a message that I was going to preach, which it was on the rapture, 
But there are so many things going on in this nation today that at the last minute I put together this message and it, it just seems like everybody just seems to be turning their back on God in this nation today. Amen. <clears throat> okay, if you would, turn your Bibles to the book of Daniel in chapter 1. Okay, Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. <clears throat> Daniel at the time was probably around 17 years of age. Okay, now Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. I would like to title my message, The Young Man Who Made Up His Mind. <clears throat> to live for God is going to take more than making a decision. To live for God is going to take more than just belonging to a church. You're going to have to make a firm decision in Christ. That will mean several things. It means that the world will not favor your decision. Satan will bring the forces of hell against you. I'm not going to stand here and be untruthful to you and tell you that it will be easy because it won't. But if you do it, many don't, I'm sad to say. Jesus said, narrow is the way and few be there that find it. But if you do it, you will gain eternal life and a peace that passes all understanding. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this church. I, I thank you for the love and the unity that we have in this church, Father. And Father, I just want to thank you for our pastor. I, I thank you that we have a pastor that still preaches your word, that we have a pastor that still stands on your word. And, and Father, I, I just pray for this nation today, Father. I, I, just, I, I just pray that they would turn back to you, that they would just seek you, Father. And, and Father, I just uh, thank you for this message. I thank you for this opportunity to be up here once again, Father. And, and Father, we ask it all in the holy and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> The way I would like to portray the scene I have just read to you is to show the United States of America as being besieged by a foreign power. Our nation which has known freedom and prosperity as no other nation on the face of the earth has ever known. And for multiple thousands of individuals to be marched away to serve as slaves in a foreign land. I pray that never happens. But that is what happened to Israel. All the nations that forget God will lose their way and will eventually lose all that is dear to their hearts and dear to their lives. America is on that road today. I say it sadly, but I say it truthfully. Israel had fallen after repeated warnings by God Almighty through many prophets. The evil and wickedness 
seemed to flow like raw sewage despite God speaking to this wayward people, his chosen people that he had touched and blessed as he had no other people on the face of the earth. They turned their backs upon him and worshipped Baal, sacrificed their children in the fire, went into the deepest wickedness until God could no longer look at this stench of this sin. When all else had failed, every door had been closed, and every prophet's mouth had been silenced, Israel had fallen. Jerusalem had fallen. Daniel was just a young man who was taken with others to the land of Shinar, Babylon. Another land, another people, heathenistic worshipers of idols. The god Nebo was a deity of Baal worship. It was a god that they worshipped. The people that worshipped God were no longer supreme. Now heathenistic, atheistic idol worshipers were supreme. I have thought many times that God would not allow America to fall. He would never allow this nation to lose its way. We must remember that God can never condone sin. Unless this country experiences revival, judgment is coming. As sure as I stand here. I'll say it again, unless we turn back to God and experience revival, judgment is coming on the United States of America. Israel lost her way, and today America is losing her way. The evangelists and preachers today stand in the place of the prophets of old, of the Old Testament stood. They're not here to win friends. They're not here to win popularity contests. They're here to preach the word of Almighty God. Amen. Israel, 2,600 years ago, was losing her way. And today, America is losing her way. Why? I suppose there are many reasons. Why today are we sitting on the edge? Why is this country embedded in sin until it boggles the mind? Why? Some of the basic reasons that this nation trembles today, some of the basic reasons that sin rolls like filth through our country, is that our children are, are now attending schools where God is banned. Jesus Christ is not allowed to be mentioned. Where Hollywood is pouring its filth through our television sets. Where today billions of dollars each year are being spent on drugs until it's the biggest business in the United States of America. Why? One reason, I believe, is because the pulpit is silent. If there has ever been a need today, there is a need for preachers of the gospel that don't care what others think, that are there for one purpose, and that is to preach the word of Almighty God. Amen. That's their business. That's what God has called them to do. If it hurts somebody's feelings, too bad. If it makes people angry, too bad. America must turn to God by preachers of the gospel that are full of the Holy Ghost. They call sin, sin, heaven pure, and hell hot. 
The problem is that today, the pulpits are silent. <clears throat> the National Council of Churches in the United States of America, which is a keystone of America's religious establishment, with a budget of over $30 million a year, two-thirds of which comes from the pockets of churchgoers and its member churches. I'm not talking about communism. I'm not speaking of socialism. I'm not talking about atheism. I'm talking about churches. The National Council of Churches' biggest contributors include the United Methodist Church, the United Presbyterians, Disciples of Christ, the Lutheran Church, the Episcopal Church, and the United Church of Christ. No one outside the NCC knows exactly how much it takes in or where it spends all its money because since 1977, no financial report has been issued. The National Council of Churches has made no attempt to hide its political activism and its plans to impose them on American government policy. <coughs> this is some of the things that the National Council of Churches supports. Number one, abortion on demand. Number two, homosexual rights. Number three, it opposes prayer in schools. Number four, it opposes tuition tax credits, meaning that churches should be taxed. Those that attend churches that sponsor this rot of hell, they give their money they think it's going to promote the gospel of God. Those that attend, belong to, or associate with the churches that I mentioned, and to make no mistake about it, I'll read them again. The National Council of Churches' biggest contributors include the United Methodist Church. Get out of it. The United Presbyterians USA, get out of it. Disciples of Christ, get out of it. The Lutheran Church in America, get out of it. <clears throat> the Episcopal Church, get out of it. The United Church of Christ, get out of it. That might sound harsh, but it's the truth. I'm not talking about the price of oil or the price of gold or the price of wheat. I'm talking about your eternal soul. Amen. And one day you're going to have to stand before God Almighty. And I've got to stand before God Almighty. And God's going to ask me, did you tell them the truth? I'm telling them, their soul is at stake. I'm saying, find a church that still shouts hallelujah. Amen. And get your family in it. Get the children in its Sunday schools. Get under a preacher that preaches the glory of Almighty God. Anointed by the Holy Ghost that will preach the word of Almighty God with an anointing and convicting as you've never heard before. I don't care what the world says or what the devil says. Serve God and love Jesus because he's soon to come. And one day you have to stand before him. You might think that's too hard. Maybe. The devil thinks it's too hard. But Satan, I've got news for you. I'm just getting started. It was proposed to Daniel 
that when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Whoever heard of worshiping a God that you can't see? They said, we have good gods, you can see them. Daniel said, you can keep your sliced pork because my God says I can't eat this stuff. You can keep your wine because my God says to leave it alone. There was no prophet or priest or anyone there to encourage Daniel. When you get right down to it, no one can carry you through the gate of pearl. Your wife can't do it. Your mother can't do it. Your father can't do it. Your pastor can't do it. Nobody can carry you through that gate except Jesus Christ walking by your side and you holding to that nail-scarred hand. When you get right down to, to it, young ladies, it may be hard, but you're going to have to stand before your high school friends. Even though they laugh at you, even though they make fun of you, but you're going to have to say, I don't do it. Young men, you're going to have to look at your so-called buddies and say, you can drink your beer if you want to. You can smoke your pot if you want to. You can tell your dirty jokes if you want to. And they may laugh at you and tell you you're crazy. But you're going to have to tell them, I'm not going to do it. Mister, when you sit down at the table and your boss is there and all your buddies are there that you work with and they're all laughing and talking and they don't serve Jesus and they don't love God and in the restaurant they bring the food and they start eating and you're going to have to say just a minute gentlemen I'm going to thank God for the food Amen. football players are going to have to look their teammates in the face when they're drinking their champagne after they have just won a big game while they're popping the champagne corks, you're going to have to stand up and say, I serve Jesus, I live for God, and I'm giving my heart to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Ladies, you might be sitting there in a beauty shop when right next to you, another lady says, I don't believe in all that Jesus stuff and it's going to hit you. You can just sit there, or you can speak up and say, I'd like to tell you that it's real. I know it's real, because I can feel it in my heart. It was hard for Daniel. He had no priest to help him, no prophet to help him, no one to help him. A 17-year-old boy, all alone in a heathen land. He made his mind up. He said, I will not defile myself. One day I've got to stand before God. One day I've got to answer to God Almighty. I will have to answer to Him for what I have preached to you. And I will, and I will have to say to Him, Lord, I did my best, no matter who liked it or who did not like it. I'm here to please one person, not the pastor, not the deacons, but I'm trying my best to please him. <laughs> Daniel's decision wasn't just a hard one. It was a heart decision. It came from his heart. I may sound a little blunt, but you will never learn about God in your head. He has to get in your heart. That's the reason why the churches and the preachers that are dead, there's no power there. There's no anointing there. There's no Holy Spirit there. 
There's no conviction there. They may preach an intellectual gospel, but they will never really get people to Jesus because this gospel is a gospel of the heart. Daniel's decision was also a decision of purity. He said, I will not defile myself. This is a rotten age. It's dirty. The reason the rot, the sewage, and the filth is here is because people no longer want God in their life. A young man in his early 20s by the name of Abraham Lincoln watched some black men and women being sold like animals on the auction block for slaves. He watched this hellish, rotten bondage of hell. He watched them as they stood there being treated as subhuman, made by God and in his image. As he heard the crack of the whip, tears rolled down his cheeks. He said, God, if you will give me the strength, I will fight this thing and I will stamp it out. I will rid this nation of this draining sore. I'm nothing but a rail splitter, but I'll do my best. Thank God, a man stood up with the courage to say, I'll do what I can to stop it. It's up to you. You can go with the crowd, or you can stand out like Daniel. There are few people in history that lived as Daniel lived. You are seated today in the place that Daniel was seated, spiritually speaking, so long ago. This man Daniel, there weren't many like him, but thank God there were a few. It's up to you today. Are you going to go with the crowd? Or are you going to step out and say, Jesus, I'm coming home. I would like to close quoting 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that your love and your grace would just touch the hearts of the people. Father, I know it's growing late, and we're, we're just trying to sound the alarm, Father. And, and Father, I, I just... I, I just... Uh, just pray to, we're just trying to tell the people to, to get right with you, Father, while there's still time. And Father, I just pray that we'd do it in, in your way as, as you would so desire. And Father, I just pray that you just open the eyes of the people before it's too late. And Father, I just ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.